Today we are talking about the best pull to decks. I have six archetypes that I formed into six really, really good decks for each archetype. I believe that they are the top six decks that you can have. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is Move, which I kind of think is the worst of the archetypes, though it's not particularly bad if you have all the cards. It's still pretty solid. The main Move cards are gonna be Craven. Doctor Strange, Iron Fist, Cloak, Multiple Man, Vulture, and Heimdall. Now, Multiple Man and Vulture are the ones that you're going to be wanting to move around that are going to improve your board in a big way. Multiple Man, there's going to be multiple copies of him all over. Vulture is going to be insanely strong. And of course, you want to push them into the Craven lane so that Craven gets his buff. There's not really a whole lot of move cards in Pool 1 and 2. To be honest, in general, in Marvel, snap move is lacking a little there needs to be some more cards added into the later pools but for pool two itself it does kind of stand reasonably tall because you have cards like forge that can go buff your multiple man and then hulkbuster can go buff him again you got america chavez that might hit the right card if you throw her in there to buff nightcrawler and vision are nice movable pieces that you could put into the craven lane on turn six so that you can kind of perfect exactly where you want to end up all in all out of the six decks that we're talking about today this is probably the worst one but still a very good deck the next deck that we're talking about is devil dino and i told you in the pool one video that devil dino is the best card in pool one and two and that stands true still but the thing that i said about the pool one decks is that devil dino might not be the best pool one deck but it certainly takes a huge step up in pool two when you add in the collector and agent 13 the goal is moon girl on four to duplicate your devil dino you play one dino out on five then you play one dino out on six but you play that dino alongside agent 13 agent 13 is going to add another two power to the board which might be the difference because there's going to be a lot of people playing devil dino in pool two but when you play agent 13 on that last turn she's going to put a card back in your hand which will buff those devil dinos that's a tip that i don't think a lot of pool one and pool two players really do so once you get agent 13 she does make a big difference in the archetype and presumably on turn two you're playing the collector which is going to get buffed by moon girl agent 13 mantis cable white queen generally speaking devil dino decks are very 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 strong in pool two the next archetype that we're going to talk about is destroy and hey would you look at that devil dino's back why is devil dino back because there aren't enough destroy cards in pools one and two so you want to kind of make up the difference with an extra like three or four cards that are going to be big and that is once again devil dinosaur you have sort of the same formula with dino if you choose to play him the cool part about this deck is that there's two different ways to win which is with destroy which is the main focus of the deck so you still have an opportunity to play moon girl on four and then dino on five and six or you can just play dino out on six as a last resort it doesn't really matter his extra power is going to be really really good but the destroy aspect is what we want to focus on with nova Bucky, Angel, Carnage, Wolverine, Killmonger, and Deathlock. Those cards are going to form a really, really solid core in Destroy. And generally speaking, all those cards are going to stick around in your Destroy decks for a while, except for Angel, who kind of sucks. But in Pool 2, Angel serves a very, very good purpose. Killmonger is such an important card in Pool 2 because you're going to run into a ton of Zoo decks. While you're out there destroying your Nova to buff up all your other cards, you're also killing killing all your opponent's one drops, which might be his main strategy. Bucky turning into Winter Soldier is six power that usually can't really be overcome by the opponent because a lot of times you're playing Carnage and Wolverine into that location too. So Wolverine's getting buffed up and going wherever he goes, but Carnage and Bucky by themselves end up being a solid 12 power in that location and your opponent kind of gives up on it. And if you do end up killing that Nova later on, they end up being 
between 14 power just by themselves with those two cards for a total of four costs. Destroy is a really, really fun archetype in Marvel Snap, and it is still an excellent one in pool two. And the next archetype that we're talking about is discard. And look at that. The destroy cards are back. Again, the reason is that there's not enough pool one and two discard cards to not include some other archetype in there. But when you mix discard and destroy, it really functions pristinely. And the reason for that is you have Apocalypse, who is basically kind of going to be that devil dino replacement from the last deck as a really strong big card that's going to get dropped out there on turn six. And Wolverine functions as sort of a two part card. You can kind of discard Wolverine right away. He jumps on the board, then you can destroy him a couple times. Now, all of a sudden, Wolverine's a solid eight power card for probably no energy because you discarded him first and that's a free card being played but your big goal is to make morbius really strong with all the discarding that you're doing you're hopefully trying to discard that swarm so that it turns into a zero cost card and then on turn six play a solid 12 or 16 power apocalypse alongside two to four swarms that are zero cost your opponent is going to be overwhelmed by the power that you're playing on turn six the fifth deck that we're talking about is a pool two kazoo deck kazoo was the number one deck in my opinion in pool one it gets to be a lot worse because of killmonger killmonger when he comes into pool two everybody's playing him so you gotta kind of be careful about the way you play it now if you follow my strategy from the first video you're gonna know that you want to play the one drops pretty much all on turn six which is gonna kind of swarm your board throw your opponent off they're not really gonna be ready for it they won't be able to kill monger because you'll presumably not have priority but if that doesn't work you also have armor in there and armor is gonna protect all those one drops we've also made a couple of other replacements with with sunspot in there which is pretty much the strongest one drop in pools one and two and shang chi which is definitely the strongest control card so if your strategy of trying to get all the one drops out on the last turn doesn't work out you don't draw them killmonger comes out and destroys a couple of them well you have shang chi there as a backup plan to take out your opponent's big power cards i still really love kazoo in pool two it just requires a little more thinking and a little bit of a different mindset than it did for pool one and the last deck that we're going to talk about is a very very cool deck for pool two it is the beginning of when you start to get control cards so you finally get a chance to kind of control the board and play sort of a mid-range slower pace game where you determine what happens in the action and we're doing that by storming one of the locations so it closes off and then throwing jessica jones in that location Jessica is going to end up being a nine power card. Your opponent's not going to be able to play in that location anymore. And you automatically win one location. Now all you have to do is win one other location. Now you can also do that with Professor X, which I did not include in this deck. It's a little harder to get Professor X to shut down the location that you really want. So I personally feel like just closing off one location with Storm and then focusing on winning the other location is still your best bet when you're in pools one and two. Also, if you do end up closing off one location and then you do play the Professor X right on turn five and you close off the second location, that opponent is just gonna leave and you're not gonna get enough cubes. So the other control cards that we have are armor to control against any of the destroy decks. Destroy is going to be running rampant in pool two. You have Cosmo to prevent your opponents from getting their on reveal effects to go off and possibly stopping their killmongers or their enchantresses or other cards in their tracks if you're able to snipe it at the right time. You also have Enchantress and Shang-Chi, which are two of the best control cards in Marvel Snap from pool two and also all the way up to pool five. Enchantress is going to stop all ongoing effects. Shang-Chi is going to take out all the big power cards, which is amazing, especially in pool two with all the devil dinos that you're facing. And you also have Spider-Woman out there who's just going to negate power from your opponent, make their side of the location a lot weaker. And the final control card is that Scarlet Witch that's going to allow you to control locations, which is exactly what we're trying to do with Storm, but just a little differently with Scarlet Witch in case somehow Limbo's out there and your opponent is going to get an extra 
return and you don't want that or in case there's a location that hurts you and you just want to fix that this deck is a ton of fun to play in pool two and it will slowly get better and better as you move on in pools because control honestly never goes out of style if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up we're putting up a lot of new beginners content and if you need me help improving your decks or anything like that let me know in the comment section i am happy to help i really appreciate you watching thank you so much i hope you have yourself a wonderful rest of your day